and uh, he evokes just about as much response in these coliseums and arenas from the young ladies as does uh, Ricky Steamboat. I'm here to tell you he's a handsome young man and all the young ladies are, are very interested in this young man Richard Blood but he's in against a rugged opponent right now and Charlie Colton who body slams him. That's very true Tom and I'm going to move out of here and you got another Texas boy a good old southern boy over here Dick Murdoch so I'm going to let him sit here with you uh -huh. and help just, you commentate and uh, just tell him not to kick the announcer's table <laughs> Dick Murdoch the sensational Dick Murdoch is now joining us Mike's side and we're glad to have him with us Richard Blood working that arm bar on Charlie Fulton right now Welcome in, Dick Murdoch. Nice to have you with us again. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here, boy. And I'll tell you what, you got two sensational athletes out there in the ring right now. I tell you, I just left uh, instructions with George Scott for you to be sure not get so worked up that you kick the, the wrestler's uh, announcer's table about three feet like you did uh, in one of our other matches on Wide World Wrestling. Look at that action up in the ring right now. Richard Blood working on uh, Charlie Fulton. Dick Murdoch loves to wrestle so much that uh, he even wrestles at the announcer's table. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you anytime, what. Anytime, anyplace, anywhere. Hey, I was born in this profession. It's in my blood. And by golly, I get excited just like somebody used to play football sitting at home watching. I get excited watching these matches and just like everybody else that's sitting out there at home does. You know, that Richard Blood's turning into be a sensational athlete. You know, he's a great football player. Making a name for himself in professional wrestling. Someday he's going to be a main eventer everywhere in the world. He, so is his Charlie Fulton. He also is a... Look at that uh, flying drop kick by Richard Blood. Beautiful arm drag. Works it back into the arm bar again. Uh, Richard Blood is a, a native of Texas. Where is Mission, Texas? I understand that's his home. Well, Mission, Texas is down past San Antonio, down in the valley where all the vegetables come from and all the fruit. And I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful place down in there. Richard Blood in against Charlie Fulton out of Detroit, Michigan. And this Charlie Fulton is a man to be reckoned with. He's a scrapper, a fighter from the word go. I'll tell you what, Richard Blood was a great football player at West Texas State University. You might say that I tutored the man there. And I'll tell you what, he's turning into be one heck of an athlete here. Well, he couldn't have a finer teacher uh, than in the form of one Mr. Dick Murdoch. And I, <laughs> I mean that sincerely. Well, thank you. I just, I'll tell you what, I just hope I help your professional wrestling we did in football. He's got his hands full right now. He's in a little bit of trouble, you know, but I'll tell you what. You're going to have to wrap him up. You're going to have to tie those legs up to cover him for a one, two, three. Fulton going for a big slam. There. And I'll, hey, you talk about getting a wind knocked out of you. That will definitely sure do it. Full force of your body coming down on your back like that. It, it, it momentarily takes the breath completely out of you, as Dick Murdoch says. Well, you know, you hear a lot of people say that don't hurt. Everybody knows how to fall and everything else. Well, I'll tell you what. You learn, I'll tell you what. When you're picked up six foot high in the air and you get slammed down, I don't care what you know. It dang sure vibrates everything in your body. And today's professional wrestlers all go at 200 pounds or better. A 200 pound man is a small man in professional wrestling today. Yeah, 200 pounders are not even hardly around anymore. You know, you look at any sport, hey, they're 260, 270, and they're getting bigger every year and better athletes. What you were saying about Richard Blood is coming through right now. If you don't count this man out, you might get him down, but uh, as Dick Murdoch says, you're going to have a heck of a time keeping him on that canvas. Foot going for that. Reverse chin lock, which is a very good hold there to keep a man down and tire him out. You're going to tire yourself out fighting, trying to get rid of it, and Fulton's got the weight on you. He's got the advantage right now in being behind his opponent. And as of right now, I'd say that Charlie Fulton is carrying this match pretty well to Richard Blood. How important is it to be the aggressor from the opening bell? I noticed in uh, you commentating the other week on Wide World Wrestling, uh, you were talking about uh, uh, a young wrestler that uh, that looked really good, but you said he's just not carrying the, the match to the other man the way he should be. Well, 99% uh, of the time, oh, there was a big need in the stomach. Richard trying to get too carried away there. At 99% of the time, you need to be the aggressor, but a lot of times you're in there against somebody that's got the more experience. Well, you need to, you know, kind of wait around, not really wait, but take things easy kind of bide your time and wait till you right because you're in there against that experience you're finally going to make a mistake and slip up and he's going to capitalize on you and beat you but you know if you got the experience on somebody you got the size you figure you got the ability plus the uh endurance we well, go ahead and be the aggressor and take the battle to him because you're finally going to work out and beat him richard blood is valiantly fighting back he uh, has had the max taken to him from the very onset but look at this a flying drop kick Right flush across the chin of Charlie Fulton. Beautiful drop kick. Richard going for that big slam. Oh. 
And a big elbow there. I'll tell you what, it come right across the chin. I believe that could be it. There's a one, two, no. Nope. You gotta wrap them up these days. The competition is getting keener all the time in professional wrestling. Uh, some maneuvers and some holes that, that used to work years ago simply do not uh, put a man away anymore. You've got to look at that. Beautiful reversal by Richard Blood. He's stepping in for his hold. I believe he's going to try to get his hold on Charlie Fulton. He's working on that leg. There he goes. He steps in, hooks that leg, and does a beautiful bridge back. Look at that. One, two, three. And that's it. That's it. The bell, and we're ready now with action fans in this match for the NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance TV Championship belt. The champion, Paul Jones, the challenger, Terry Sawyer. As Sawyer backs him into the ropes and gets a clean break as Sawyer backs away from him. Terry Sawyer, man from Norfolk, Virginia. Very good amateur wrestler, Paul Jones. Nice sit out. Sawyer. Well, Jones moving very well also as they both were. And they come up looking each other eye to eye there. And I tell you, if looks would kill, we'd have to drag them both out of the ring right now. That's right. All right, now let's. Paul Jones, remember, his title is at stake for the first 15 minutes of the match. Nice move by Paul. Nice move. And again, uh, face to face and almost toe to toe. Each with her fist ball in a right hand cocked and ready to throw. Jones dove in, trying to get that leg, and quickly Sawyer pulled it away. Each man has a, a very great deal of respect for each other. Paul Jones, because he's the National Wrestling Alliance television champion, he has to respect every opponent and cannot take it lightly. All right, now they're trying, trying for position. And they're going to be backed into the ropes in the corner. Now, let's see what happens here. It's Sawyer with his back in the ropes. Last time it was Jones, and Sawyer backed away. Right, Jones, Jones is not going to no, back he's away. Not. Well, wow. and Sawyer protected himself very well yes, in that is. corner. I don't think Jones will have let him out. No, I sir. really don't. Good, smart move on the part of Sawyer as he was ready for him. Under right, for the carry. Comes up with the arm bar. Nice move. Now with the arm and up on his tiptoes, trying to get all the leverage. Jones going to send him to the mat, but he's going to keep that bar. Yes, he is. Paul Jones. Still has it. And now he's trying for the leg. Paul Jones, his favorite hold is the Indian death lock, so you need to watch for that. If he can get the legs in that, it can be all over for you. All right. Nice, nice go through. Has a double wrist lock. And he's still got that arm. Right. Watch out. Wait a minute. All right, there he's going to be back corner in the corner again. again. And let's see if he can protect himself this time. All right. Jones. Jones trying. He's trying to get him back there. Trying to find an open spot. He and did. And he did with the elbow. Into the top of the head. The elbow now. A rabbit punch to the back of the neck with that elbow. That was a forearm to the head. An elbow now. Now Sawyer into Jones, trying to slow him down, lean on him if he can, and backs him to the ropes. And is he going to break clean? No! Big right. left hand. Now Sawyer is a left-handed wrestler. Now, the majority of wrestlers are right-handed, so this is confusing Jones right now. He's really not used to it yet. There was Jones with the right hand. They caught him right on the chin. Oh, right and across the nose. Right across the nose with it. He's going to whip him now across the ring into the turnbuckle. Hard goes Sawyer into that turnbuckle, and here's Jones right after him. All right. Whipped him out. Jones now. They're in, those they're in the corner. Uh, it's Jones in that corner. Sawyer driving that shoulder hard into the midsection again and again. All right. Drop kick. Just as Jones got up, Sawyer was right there with a drop kick. Now the elbow. Again, he goes to the head with the elbow. That looked like a fist right into the throat. Picks him up. Hard slam down on the mat. And Jones is what? He's going to go to that leg. Yes. Now, remember what I said, the Indian death lock. That's his favorite Again hole. with a knee and again, and this is what he's trying to set up right yes, now. Yes, it is. 
He's trying yeah, to get it locked yes, in. Yes, yes sir. he did. He's got it locked got it in locked. now. Here's Paul Jones with the Indian death lock now on Terry Sawyer. And Sawyer, he is really fighting it, but he has to say yes. No way he can continue to withstand that tremendous pressure. And the referee now telling Jones to break it as he starts to count on him. And Jones now continuing to apply the pressure in that Indian death lock. And we can look at that again in slow motion to see just how Paul Jones got it set. Two or three good hard knee drops right down across that thigh muscle. It had it all set for Jones, and from there he came in, locked in that Indian death lock, and it was all over for young Terry Sawyer with our winner and still champ, Paul Jones. Tony. Tony, there it is, and that's looky, a looky that's a here, Tony year. Atlas. And I just happened to have one for you. That is a solid steel bar of that, there is no doubt. Peep a temp, peep a temp, peep a temp, peep a temp, peep a temp. Yeah, here goes Tony. Strength on that bar. Woo! He did it. That's a toughie. Now, Kim Patel, I have did all of your muscle man stuff. I have listened to all of your bad talking. I am not a weightlifter. I am not a bodybuilder. I am a wrestler, and wrestling when I do best at it. So give me a chance at your title. Now that I did what you want me to do, do what I want and give me a chance at that title that I want your I'm title. I'm telling you something, Tony Atlas. Don't push too fast. We want the title. You think he ain't take my title? title? Yeah. Yeah. And a headbutt from Tony Atlas and Katera goes right back. Uh, I'm going to get some more of you until I get that title, boy. And a headbutt. The head. Weaver let him go and he bounces right back out. And he's getting awfully weak, it looks yes, like. Yes, he is. How much? Is he going to go yeah, out? He... He's going to hit the mat. He's working. Oh, he Weaver with a lot. sleeper. One minute. There one minute. One minute gone. remaining. One now. minute. That's one it. Minute. That's it. Safe. Beautiful. Daddy Weaver won. Time left. And Johnny Weaver in the sleeper. He still had a minute to go. Johnny Weaver, the winner. The sleeper hole of Johnny Weaver defeats the claw hole of Aaron Von Raschke. Right. Raschke is yelling choke. Raschke is yelling choke. And now he attacks Weaver from behind. Negro gives him the chair. Oh! And he really hits that turnbuckle with that chair. That post. And he just about tore that chair up. Weaver, he does the smart thing. He gets out of the ring. That's right. You have to against that metal chair. No way to stay around and fight him with that chair in his hand. And Johnny Weaver with that sleeper hole is the winner over Barry.